Welcome to Studio D on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. This is Sooner Sports Pad. And now, your host, Tori Johnson. Making your Monday just a little bit sweeter. Welcome back to Sooner Sports Pad here with Josh Callaway. You guys know him. And the new guy, Sam Brown, debut episode. Sam, how are you feeling tonight? Coming, I'm fired up. Oh, absolutely, buddy. Happy for you, excited for your first show. You have exactly. a great crowd for your first show. Who exactly. is the crowd? Class Council is in the crowd tonight. They're loud and rowdy. Also, a special shout out to some of my best friends in the back. They're being loud and rowdy as They're well. They're loud and rowdy, and they should be at your first show. We also have women's basketball players, Jaleesa Penzo there and Maddie go. Williams. And later on in the show, Sam and I will give our Sooner MVPs from the big weekend in OU Sports. Plus, later, in, uh, later on in the show, our very own Spencer Royce takes us behind one Sooner athlete's exciting life off the court. Riding a five-game losing streak, Sooner basketball kept the wheels from coming completely off the schooner Saturday night. OU secured an impressive 71-62 win over the TCU Horned Frogs. It was all made possible due to the hot hand of Christian Doolittle. In just his second 20-point outing, he racked up 21 points and 10 boards for a big-time double-double. Combine that with a stout team defensive effort, and you get a Sooner dub. With this team just being five games away from the Big 12 tournament, they are making big steps in locking in a spot in March Madness. Sam, what did you see from the men's basketball team out on the yeah, court? Yeah, it was a huge road win on the uh, on the road, no Definitely. doubt about it. And they could not have done it without the big man, Christian Doolittle. Absolutely unstoppable. I think he loves playing against TCU. The last time they took played here in Norman, he had a double-double. He had another double-double again on Saturday in Fort Worth. He was working down low. He was working in the mid-range. Practically unstoppable the entire night. The team also moved the ball really well with 18 assists on 27 baskets. And you have to shout out OU's defense holding the Horn Frogs to 35% shooting on the day. They really needed this one and they're back in Norman here on Saturday for a matchup with the Texas Longhorns. We know them, we hate them, but this is another game that they can win <laughs> as they look to pick up some momentum down the stretch. Yeah, really good to see men's hoops get back to yeah. the win column. OU baseball got their season started this weekend and it was really cold but they came out hot yeah. and they swept Cal Poly this weekend. Three game sweep of the Mustangs. On Friday, Bradley Ware, he was that guy. He went two for three with an RBI at the plate, made a several stellar defensive plays in the field. Sooners won game one, four to one. Game two was somehow even colder than game one, but it didn't stop the bats. They put up nine runs, eight different guys recorded an RBI, so a really good team effort. Then on Sunday, they got the brooms out, completed the sweep of Cal Poly, won that one, five to one. Behind six and a third, really good innings from Levi Prater. Tyler Hardman, Connor McKenna, each two for four, two RBIs, and they are off to their first 3-0 start since 2013. So really good stuff. Nice and easy sweep. Really good stuff. They'll now take on Dallas Baptist here on Wednesday at 3, trying to go to 4-0. Really good start for Sooner Baseball. Yeah, like you said, they opened up their season with a bang, and Madeline Roberts got to catch up with Tyler Hardman. Let's head over to her for a minute. Madeline? Hi, welcome to Madeline's Minute. I'm Madeline Roberts here at Eldale Mitchell Park with OU Baseball's Tyler Hardman. Tyler, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Good. All right, let's get started. You just completed the three-game sweep of Cal Poly. To open up your season, what's it like to get your season started off on a good foot like this? Uh, it's, it's very important to get on a good field, make sure everyone's on the same page. And it, I mean, it gets even more better when you're uh, able to win the series and even just stick with your plan and make sure you're on to the next game no matter what. I heard it's your coach Skip Johnson's birthday today. Mm -hmm. Is it a little extra special to complete the uh, sweep on his birthday? Yeah, it's it's really cool to be able to do that, especially because someone as important as him has such good influence on people. It's it means a lot. What's he like as a coach? I mean, what's his coaching style like? He is the best coach. He has the mindset of a learning experience, and it just it really shows like that we're able to. We're never afraid to fail or anything because we know that he's going to be there. He's not going to be there angry at us. We're there to learn, and we're always doing better for it. Your team lost a lot of talented guys after last season. So what's it been like trying to kind of make up for that productivity that you lost? Uh, you'll never be able to replace perfect guys, but um, when you have everyone that's working together as a team, it's a lot easier, and that's what we have this year, and we're pretty fortunate for it. Perfect. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you. Looking ahead to this week's Sooner Sports schedule in Norman. Last chance to see the wrestling team during regular season on Friday. And if you guys haven't gotten to check out the men's gymnastics team, they're the real deal. And they have a meet at home on Saturday. And hey, why don't you make it a Sooner Sports doubleheader and head on over to the LMC 
see and catch the men's basketball team too. And you can watch our guests on Wednesday in the LNC for a matchup with Iowa State. Speaking of our women's basketball players, Sam, how's their season going? Hey, well, I talked about the men getting a win last week, so why not stop the trend there? The women's team took down Kansas last week, too. They are back on track. They were on fire against the Jayhawks, shooting nearly 50% from the field and 5 for 11 from deep. Anya Nusa, she's been lights out lately. She had 21 points, along with 18 points and 11, reboards, 11 rebounds from our guest, Maddie Williams. And just like the men's team, the women's team was carving through the Kansas defense with assists on nearly half of their shots. Unfortunately, like we said, took a tough road loss at Baylor, number one team in the country, but 31 more points from Yanusa. They've got three home games over the next couple of weeks, so I think if we start to get a couple more wins down the stretch, they have a chance to make a big statement at the Big 12 tournament in Oklahoma City next Definitely. month. For sure. Looking forward to it. Good to see them get back to the win column. One team that's no stranger to winning on this campus is the women's gymnastics team. They were in action on Friday at the Perfect 10 Challenge. Guess what? They won. They won it's again. Surprise. Olivia yeah. Troutman did exactly what the event says. She put up a perfect 10. The fourth OU freshman to ever have a perfect 10. The other three OU freshmen to do it are all still on the team. Maggie Nichols, Brenna Dow, and Anastasia Webb. Pretty ridiculous. They dominated the competition, won all the individual events. You had Troutman take vault and floor. Nichols won bars. Dow took all around, and Dow and Webb both split the bean crown with 9.9s each. And your perfect outing. Win number 450 for Coach KJ Kindler. Should go that for win number so 451. <laughs> Should go for win number 451 in Morgantown on Sunday. So same old, same old, same yeah. old with them. Just dominating everybody. Yeah, same story, different week. Every time. Well, up next, we're going to get some basketball pointers from some Sooner stars. And we're going to take a trip back in time and show you some of the best dunks ever. Oh, hey. <laughs> Welcome back. This year, Miles Reynolds joined the OU basketball team, but getting buckets for the Sooners isn't the only interesting thing about him. Sports pad Spencer Royce shows us some of his high profile friends. Let's take a look. Miles Reynolds, the senior straight out of the Windy City, is not your common D1 athlete. Now, at his third school in his college career, the 6'3 combo guard has done all things necessary to fit in at the University of Oklahoma. I'm such an open guy. I, I adapt to uh, pretty much any situation I'll be in, uh, I could go out to China or Alaska and I'll still be able to be myself because I really am a good people's person I, and I interact with others well. So His teammates and coaches notice that Miles takes an interactive personality into the locker room and onto the court. He, he brings a lot of energy to the team and uh, I mean, he's a really good teammate to everybody so I love being around Miles. Miles has been great. Uh, his energy, his enthusiasm, uh, uh, this kind of recklessness, you know, has been good. Fans and media are aware that many D1 athletes have tendencies to keep to themselves or appear to be uninterested in social aspects of their careers. Uh, I think I'm the opposite of that. Um, you know, being social has allowed me to meet a lot of people, um, open up to a lot of experiment, uh, uh, experiences for me. And those people he's been able to become friends with include Grayson Allen, Devin Booker, Jay-Z, Magic Johnson, Vic Mensa, and even Jamie Foxx. The list goes on and on, but Miles has special relationships with a few more people, starting with the Obama family. Both of us are very close. The Obamas and my family, the Reynolds, we've, uh, we were raised, I was raised two blocks away from where he raised his family. So, um, we went to the same school. I went to the same school as uh, Malia and Sasha. Miles got to be a part of some pretty amazing moments with the Obama family as well. I went out to the Democratic National Convention with the Obamas. I was able to, uh, on election night, I was in the Obama tent when he was erected, elected the first uh, black president of the U.S. If that wasn't enough, he's also pretty tight with Grammy Award winning recording artist, Chance the Rapper, I kind of look at, as, look at him as a big brother to me. Um, growing up, he would always uh, just be there. Um, he was in the same grade as my sister. It doesn't get much better than getting advice and friendship from the 44th president of the United States and one of the more influential rappers of the past five years. It's clear to Miles that they did a lot for him. They helped me grow a lot as a person. Uh, they're always there for me every time I'm able to go back to Chicago. Um, they're always able to meet up with me and just keep giving me advice and uh, just being great friends. 
Even though Miles Reynolds' personal life is far more interesting than most people, those close to him know how genuine he truly is. He's got always got something to bring to the table and uh, cheer somebody up. And he wants you to know that. I'm just a regular guy. Um, I love having fun. I love interacting with other people. I view myself just as equal as anybody else in this world. With the final stretches of the regular season coming up, the Sooners are glad to have one of the more interesting athletes in all of college basketball in Crimson and Cream. Spencer Royce, Sooner Sports Pad. Now it's time to hear from our guests, Jaleesa Pinzo and Maddie Williams. <laughs> Good to see you guys. All right. <laughs> Just to start off, you guys, I talked about it earlier, the big win against Kansas last week. How good was it uh, to, to kind of get back on track, and what was the key to kind of that? <laughs> um, I think, I mean, there's no secret that it's been kind of tough, but – um, the key of it is just playing free. It was just kind of going out there and just playing for each other and just having fun on the court, uh, finding that joy again. Yeah. And, bringing a, um, and bringing a lot of energy and communication and effort. Um, it's, just a lot, it's just one thing that we've preached for every game and everything that we do. Yeah, I want to go off that because all year, you know, you guys have been a tough season, but you guys always seem like you're having fun and always playing hard. Is that a big key to you guys? Yeah, definitely. I feel like whenever we're having fun, it brings a lot of energy, and that's what we need as a young team um, to be able to play in the Big 12 is to have a lot of energy. Yeah. Jaleesa, when I see you on the sidelines, it seems like you're louder than Coach Cole is sometimes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know it too. I mean, some, you're the cheerleader for the team. You're coaching from the sidelines. How much pride do you take in that? And, Maddie, how does that help you girls when you're out, to, when you're out there on the court? I um, take a lot of pride in that because I want to do everything that I can to help those on the court. Um, like you said, sometimes I'm like louder than Coach Cole, so whenever she's trying to get somebody's attention, I just yell their name, and they'll look immediately. So she's like, are you kidding? Like, <laughs> Yeah, um, a lot of times we listen to Jilly more than we listen to Coach Cole because Jilly will give us the information that we need right then and there without us, without us having to be like, oh, my God, that's yeah. Coach Cole again, you know? <laughs> Next game up is the field trip game. It's bright and early, Wednesday morning, 10.30 a.m. tip. How special is that game? You played in a, b a yeah. few times. I'll just be your first one, but just how special is that? Um, it's just so cool having all those kids there. They will get excited about anything and everything. Sometimes they don't have no idea what's going on, but they just, <laughs> just yell. And, I mean, it helps us. It just kind of feeds us energy. So, um, for, sure. for me, it's always a special day just to have those kids and kind of inspire them. Yeah. Maddie, first time? Yeah, for my first time. Um, Earliest you've ever played? 10 yeah, first time I've ever played 1030 and first time that I've ever played in a room f full of kids. And um, I just hope that it's uh, – more energizing than it is annoying. Yeah, that's right. I'm here with Isaiah, and he's a quick question for you guys. Uh, Maddie, I heard you was a dancer. Could you show us some dance moves? Oh, oh. 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 Yes. 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 come on, pressure. Oh, come on. Do the whoa. The whoa. Do the whoa. Oh, you kill whoa. that. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. you guys right now but whenever we come back our analysts are gonna face off you won't want to miss it <laughs> to our Cornerstone Television partners, OU Medicine, Anheuser-Busch, OU Extended Campus, and our community partners, Landers Auto Group, Devon Energy, Coca-Cola, and OU Medicine. Welcome back to your sports bat. It's time for our analysts to face off. I'm gonna give them random sports topics and they're gonna debate them. You guys ready for that? I'm so fired up. Sure. Okay. I've never sure. been more excited. All right, well, question number one. Sooner MVP of the weekend. Go ahead, Sam. Man, there's there are a lot to choose from from this weekend, yeah. but I'm going to go to the diamond for my pick. I'm going to go with a player who picked up right off where she left off last season. That's Jocelyn Allo. She was absolutely phenomenal in the Clearwater Invitational in Florida. Let me read you guys some stats real quick. Friday against Notre Dame, Allo went one for three and scored one of Oklahoma's six runs on the day. Saturday against Florida Atlantic, three for three with a double and another run. And then the icing on the cake, Sunday against Hofstra, three for four with not one, but two home runs and five RBIs. It's that easy. There's no other way to put it. Ola is one of the best players in the country. And if she keeps this up, Oklahoma's going to be right back where it belongs, going for another natty for Patty. I was going to say, softball's primarily making yeah. another run another title. 
For me, I'm going to go with, Tori talked about him, you talked about him, I want to talk about him too. Christian Doolittle had yeah. such a big game against CCU, 21 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists. He was huge in ending that losing streak. You know, last year was a bit of a dip for him after that really promising freshman year for him. He's starting to assert himself as one of the best guys on that team. He was huge this weekend. Also, one little bonus MVP, Oops. Jason Ruffcorn of OU Baseball. He transferred in from Texas A&M. He wasn't sure if he was going to be eligible this season. They ruled him eligible on Friday. He got the save in the opener that day. So he literally wow. wasn't sure if he was going to play. He played that night. Pretty cool. That's good stuff. That's, good stuff. <laughs> that's a quick turn. That's a busy day. Yeah. That's, a lot. that's a lot one day. Well, speaking of baseball, we know the Sooners opened up this weekend, but some former Sooners are at spring training. So I'm back with Isaiah. He's got another question for you guys. Um, which Sooner do you think will stand out the most in spring training? Man, there's hmm. a lot of a lot of Sooners in the MLB a right lot. now. I'm yeah. going to go with the guy who's been around for a little bit, but I think could really have a breakout year. That's the righty pitcher, Jonathan Gray. For those of you who don't remember him, the number three overall pick in 2013 after going 10-3 and three with a 1.64 ERA with the Sooners. I mean, that's unhittable. That, you just can't stop that. Was filthy. I know he had some tough games with the Colorado Rockies last year, but he also had a couple stretches against teams like the Astros and the Brewers, championship caliber teams where he just dominated. And the Rockies clearly have a ton of confidence in him after making him their opening day started last season and they're going to be right back in the playoffs this year so I think this is the season he puts all the pieces together and becomes one of the breakout uh, breakout young pitchers in baseball yeah really big big year for Jonathan Gray yeah with the Rockies now we all know the A's lost out on Kyler Murray he's not coming so he's yeah. going to the he's going to go play football but it's okay for the A's they have another OU Sooner in the prospects who's going to be really really good Sheldon Noisy okay last time Sheldon Noisy was at OU was 2016. That season, he hit 369. He hit 10 homers, 48 RBIs, and had 12 stolen bases. He was an absolute machine for the Sooners in 2016. He took it into single A in 2017. He hit 349 at AAA Nashville. He hit 263. He had five homers and 55 RBIs. He is an absolute horse for the Oakland A's in the minor league system. I think he's got a chance to be a major league contributor very soon for Oakland. And a, a lot of players got drafted this year, too. For so sure. just racking them oh, back up. Absolutely. Okay, well, I don't know about you guys, but my favorite part of the All-Star Weekend is the dunk contest. Yeah, yeah. So, Absolutely. I want you guys to show me a video of your favorite All-Star dunk ever. Go ahead, Sam, impress me. I'm not going to lie. I love the dunk contest, and there have been some insane jams over the years. But For sure. I'm going to go to 2015. Eric Gordon, he had that incredible matchup with Zach Levine. And he brings in the mascot, a, a hoverboard. I mean, you just have to see it to believe it. Just take a look at this. This is real. This is real. Let me just break this down, because there's a lot that happens. First of all, yeah, the, the spinning part is pretty cool. He cups the ball with his hand, and then the hand behind the back as he just slams it down. That is insane. I'm, I'm shocked he didn't win that year, but in my opinion, that is hands down the best dunk I've seen in a dunk contest. It's a really good one, but I feel like you're talking about the dunk contest. You have to talk about one man, and it's Vince Sanity. Vince Carter, 2000 to 360 windmill. Let's watch it, then we'll break it down. Unbelievable. Vince Sanity, the man himself, he said it's over. He was the man, best dunker of all time. I almost went with Hamadou Diallo, who <laughs> impersonated Vince Carter with his dunk on Saturday night. Yeah. But got to go with the best dunker of all time, Vince Carter. That's a it's good hard pick. To turn him down. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, now it's time it for our audience to vote on who you guys think the winner is. You're going to cheer the loudest for who you think here. the winner is. So if you think the winner is Sam, go ahead and cheer. Come on. Come on. There we go. Come on. All your Come friends, on. the people who are impressed, are going to room vote for me. I love my friends. <laughs> Now, if you think Josh is the winner, go ahead and cheer. That's pretty good. That's, That's close. Pretty good. That's close. I covered the spread. At the very least, I covered the spread. <laughs> That's so close. That's, that's such a hard pick, but I'm going to have to go with Sam, the new guy. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Tori needs to get her ears checked. Tori's bad going 1-0 on yeah. FaceTime. Tori needs to get her ears checked. That's all we got for you right now. But when we come back, we're going to hear from our guests. We're going to figure out how well they really know each other. So hold tight to those commercials. We'll be right back. questions 
and now she's going to guess the answers. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, well, question number one. All right. What is Maddie's favorite cheat meal? Is it A, Slims, B, Wada, or C, Canes? Slams. Slams? Slams is pretty good. Oh, yeah! This will probably be an easy one. Right. What is Maddie's favorite NBA team? Is it A, the Lakers, B, the Heat, C, the Thunder, or D, the Warriors? Thunder. Let's go Thunder. Mm, I'm going to go with <laughs> the Warriors. The Warriors. Oh, man. She thought you picked for a bandwagon. <laughs> Okay, so question number three. You can come back on this one. What is Maddie's go-to hype song? Like for a game, for practice, something? Is it A, Mo Bamba, B, Mistress, or C, God's Plan, or D, Sicko Mode? Sicko Mode. <laughs> Mo Bamba. Bamba. Oh, oh, I don't even know that. that is incorrect. Okay, wow. you, you, can, you can bounce back, bounce back on this one. Right. So question number that is. four. <laughs> What is Maddie's favorite thing to do to relax, like on an off day or anything? Is it A, watch Netflix, B, sleep, C, play video games, or D, read? Sleep. Read. She don't read. <laughs> she don't read. She don't read. Okay, last question for you. Right. Question number five. If Maddie could visit one place on Earth, where would she go? A, Hawaii, B, Barbados, C, Colorado, or D, Greece? Greece. Barbados. Oh, uh, Barbados. Okay, let's see. You guys, you can get on a good note. That's good. You guys know each other. I believe it. Maybe you guys need to go get fast food together more often or something. But thank you so much for joining. Be sure to tune in next week and check us out on social media.